pray that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. For all your saints in glory, for all your saints at rest, to you, our Lord and Saviour, all praises be addressed. Apostles, martyrs, prophets, who served you in their day, have left us their example of following your way. Uh, one of the great hymns uh, of praise, mentioning the saints of the church. And tomorrow, the 24th of August, is St. Bartholomew's Day. And we'll talk more about Bartholomew later, but I thought it would be a good thing today to remember Bartholomew and keep him as the focus of our thoughts and our prayers. The hymn that Stuart's just played for us goes on to say, Beneath the shading fig tree Bartholomew you knew, and saw him, Lord, as guileless, as one to follow you. Like him, may we now follow in every word and deed, and serve you in obedience, and from our sins be freed. Well, you're welcome to join us here in Greensport Parish Church once again, and if you've been with us regularly, you'll know that I've changed my place, and there's a reason for that. I wanted, uh, with Amanda's help, to get this door in. This is our memorial door, and it marks the dead of the two world wars. And even a little village like Groomsport gave up a number of its young men uh, who died in the service of their country. And I want to talk about them as well a little later in this service. So you're all very welcome, uh, and I hope you can join us in our singing, in our praising, and in our thinking. So, loving Lord, speak to us, that we may hear your word. Loving Lord, move among us, that we may behold your glory. Loving and faithful Lord, receive our prayers, that we may learn to trust in you. And wherever we are today, we have gathered as part of the body of Christ, as God's people, and we're going to worship God together. Come, let us join our cheerful songs with angels round the throne. Ten thousand thousand are their tongues, but all their joys are one. Christians, we believe that the Word of God is living and active, that the Word of God judges the thoughts and intentions of our hearts. 
All is open and laid before the eyes of him to whom we have to give account. So wherever we are, let us confess our failings and our sin, praying for God's forgiveness. Let us do this in penitence and in faith. God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. And I pray that the God of love and power will forgive us and free us from our sins, our failings and our weaknesses. I pray that the God of all love and power will heal and strengthen us by his Holy Spirit. And I pray too that that same God will raise us like Bartholomew to new life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We give you thanks, loving Father, because by your Holy Spirit you lead us into all truth and give us grace to proclaim your gospel to all peoples and to serve you as a royal priesthood with the angels, with the saints, with Bartholomew. We tell of your glory, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And a prayer for St. Bartholomew's Day. Almighty and everlasting God, who gave to your apostle Bartholomew grace truly to believe and to preach your word, Grant that your church may love that word which he believed and may faithfully preach and receive the same. And this Sunday, the 23rd of August, is the 11th Sunday after Trinity. And this is the special prayer for the day. Loving God, you declare your almighty power, most chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Mercifully grant us such a measure of your grace that we, running the way of your commandments, may receive your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasure. Both these prayers, Father, we make through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our readings today are read by Barry Greenaway. The reading comes from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, beginning at the 12th verse, which is, continues to relate the events following Pentecost. Now, many signs and wonders were done amongst the people through the Apostles, and they were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest dared join them, but the people held them in high esteem. Yet more than ever believers were added to the Lord, great numbers of both men and women, so that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, in order that Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he came by. A great number of people would also gather from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all cured. This is the word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel is written in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 22, beginning at verse 24, which continues St. Luke's account of the Last Supper. A dispute also arose among them as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But Jesus said to them, The King of the Gentiles lorded over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you just as my Father has conferred on me a kingdom so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. This is the Gospel of Christ. Uh, thank you Barry. Uh, before Barry read the Gospel, Stuart played that lovely hymn, Spirit of God unseen as the wind telling us about how the God, the Word of God, comes to us through his Holy Spirit. Well, as I said at the start of this service, today we're concentrating, or I'm concentrating upon St. Bartholomew, whose feast day is tomorrow. Now, pause for a moment. What do you know about St. Bartholomew? That was much as that, because I know absolutely nothing about him. He is one of these characters in the New Testament who's mentioned once in the Gospels as being one of the twelve and then disappears completely out of sight. There is some confusion or some thinking that maybe Bartholomew is also known as Nathaniel and St. John's Gospel. Jesus tells us that he is a man without guile. We heard that in our first hymn. But after that mentioning as being one of the twelve, nothing else is heard of Bartholomew. He disappears almost out of history. There are, of course, legends and traditions that have been built up around him, uh, notably that he ended his life in Armenia. He took the gospel to Armenia and there he was brutally, brutally martyred. He was flayed alive and like every good saint he has a symbol in the church and the symbol that reminds us of Bartholomew is the rather unpleasant butcher's knife because Bartholomew was butchered. So he disappears out of history but that he was a faithful Christian and died a martyr's death is pretty certain, I have to say. But thinking about Bartholomew made me think about the men named on this door just over here to my left. This is our memorial door. Uh, we have lots of other churches have great big brass plaques or stone memorials to their war dead. We have this memorial door and there's another memorial door just over here on the right. And on here you have the names of, from, of those who lived in this village at the time. For example, let's take one at random, Cyril Tapping. If I'm honest, I know nothing about Cyril Tapping. Uh, Henry Waterson. 1914-18 war. There are still some Watersons left living in this village. There are many more Watersons. It would be a very brave man who got the two muddled up. On all the war memorials around our towns, cities and villages, there are names of people who are now largely forgotten, other than the fact that their names are inscribed on war memorials. Last weekend was VJ Day, the 75th anniversary of VJ Day. And don't forget VJ Day, the fighting of the Japanese, the people who brought us victory over Japan, weren't just the pilots uh, who dropped the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It was the Fourth Army. 
known now in legend as the Forgotten Army. VE Day came in May and the whole country went wild with expectation. Meanwhile, the 4th Army were out in Burma fighting a vicious, dirty war and in which so many, many of them died and never came back. And we all know the stories about the treatment of prisoners of war by the enemy, by the Japanese. Uh, it defies belief. These men, and indeed some women as well, died uh, the most revolting deaths at the hands of their guards. In Japanese prisoner of war camps, there were those who were flailed, flayed to death, were skinned alive. There are lots of forgotten heroes in our world doing that which Bartholomew did in his time and in his world. Lots of people, believe it or not, who still profess Christ as King, Christ the Son of God, Christ the risen Saviour, who, simply because they say these things, are taken to one side, as we saw in northern Syria during the ISIL madness, were being beheaded and flayed alive thrown off the tops of buildings, murdered, murdered. But their names have now escaped us. Can you remember any of the ones who were so brutally killed by the Islamists during that vicious and dirty campaign? Probably not, I can't. But they were martyred simply for professing Christ crucified and risen as Lord and Saviour. And even in our own communities, there are lots of people that we don't know who go about with Christ on their hearts, doing the things that Christ did in his day. And John Major famously called them the little old lady who goes off to even song on a Sunday evening. Uh, we would be a very poor world if we didn't watch people going off to church, even if we don't necessarily believe what they believe in, or do what they do, but they are there and they are about and they are praying for us and where possible caring for us. So we know nothing about Bartholomew other than he was martyred for simply professing Christ crucified and risen. And I suppose the message of St Bartholomew's day and his feast day, the lesson we should learn from it, is that we shouldn't take our faith for granted. We shouldn't treat it with disdain and just as part of our lives. We should remember that it has cost not only our Lord's life, but countless disciples after him. And I wonder, I wonder whether we, in our time, would be prepared to be martyred for Christ crucified and risen, our Lord who died for us. Let's declare our faith as Bartholomew did in that loving Lord. We believe. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And of course Bartholomew and his fellow apostles and all the martyrs and saints and all the Christians in the world today couldn't do what they did without the presence of God in their lives. Speak, Lord, in the stillness. Speak your word to me. Help me now to listen in expectancy.
be, join me now in prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, hear the prayers which we offer in faith and love. We pray for peace and for your salvation to be known throughout the world. We particularly pray for our own land today and all the problems we seem to have. We pray for our youngsters those who thought they were going to university then weren't sure and now don't know where they are. For the confusion over their exam results. Lord, be with them and let them know that their world hasn't come to an end. That there is indeed life after this life. And that even if they didn't get the grades they wanted, the world will go on turning and they will play their part in it. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Here in this holy place we pray for the one holy Catholic and apostolic church and for the unity of all Christian people and for those who serve and lead in the church. For David, our bishop, for priests, ministers, pastors, deacons, readers. One holy, catholic and apostolic church, we remember that the church was founded by our Lord and built up on the ministry and witness of the apostles like Bartholomew. And we pray today for all those carrying that witness into dangerous and inhospitable places, places like Iraq, northern Nigeria, China, places where freedom of speech is unknown, places where there is little or no justice, places where the gospel of loving one's neighbour is quashed. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray here for this little village of Groomsport and our parish. Take a moment to pray for your community, your street, your neighbours. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And in this holy moment, we remember our families, particularly members of our families who live far away from us. Indeed, members of our families who live in foreign countries. People we haven't seen, loved ones we haven't seen for many months because of COVID or for other reasons. We pray for our friends, And we try to pray for those we found difficult, those that somehow or other we've fallen out of love with or out of friendship with. God give us grace to love them in this moment. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who are sick, both in body and in mind. Pray for Gregor and Angela and Warren and little Henry. Henry, two years old, now being cared for in the Children's Hospital in Bristol. He's a very sick young man. He's really only a baby. And we pray for his mum and his dad, who must be breaking their hearts about him at the moment. Lord, be with all those, especially the young ones and their parents who are struggling today. Wrap them in your loving arms and assure them 
of your love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And, of course, we remember, as I'm sure we do day by day, those we have loved and who have died. Grandparents, parents, brothers and sisters, and alas, even for some, children. We remember them now, not necessarily with sadness, but with love. Loving Father, rejoicing in the fellowship of your holy apostles, martyrs, Bartholomew, and of all your saints, departed this life in your faith and fear, we commend ourselves and to one another, to you, loving Lord God. And this we do through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, who in days of old didst give to this land the benediction of thy holy church, withdraw not, we pray thee, thy favour from us, but so correct what is amiss and supply what is lacking, that we may more and more, like Bartholomew, bring forth fruit to thy glory. Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us o'er the world's tempestuous sea. together to a close. In darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, help us, Heavenly Father, to trust your love, to serve your purpose, and to praise your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And like Bartholomew, let us give glory to God whose power at work among us can do infinitely more than all we can ask or conceive. To him be glory in the Church and in Christ Jesus for ever and ever. Amen. 
and wherever you are. I pray that God will give you grace to share the inheritance of Bartholomew and of all God's saints in glory. And I pray too that the blessing of that same loving God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, I pray the blessing of God will be with you and those you love, care for and pray for. God's blessing be with you and them today, tomorrow and forevermore. Amen. And wherever you are, go from this service in peace to love and serve our Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.